The one of the most important tasks you would do with SECM, Microsoft, they have renamed it. I should call it MECM, so which is Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager, MECM. Uh, that most important task you would do, uh, that's one of the most important tasks you would do with MECM is uh, operating system deployment. If everything works well and good, however if something does not work what you should do so in this video we are going to look at what are our options when this happens when operating system deployment does not work or it does not actually do what we have configured it for okay and there are a few logs we can check and uh, there's something that we can do on the SCCM console as well MECM console and uh, we will change some settings and also uh, we will look at on the client side what we can do and what logs we can check out. Hello everyone, this is Jay Singh. Welcome to my channel. Let's get started. Okay, so I have broken down this video into three parts. Okay, in the first part, we are going to look at what happens when we PXE boot a device. All right, on the server side, what are the logs we should be looking at? What happens when it actually um, and device actually PXE boots? All right, that's the first thing we are going to cover. And the second part, we will be looking at how to enable command support while operating system is deploying on the end client. So with the help of command support we can look at the logs while actually operating system is deploying. And the last thing, uh, which is actually very important, is we will be looking at smsts.log file, which is the most important log file on the client when we deploy operating system. All right, so now we are going to uh, look at the PXE log. So name of this log is smspxe.log. And uh, this log is located on the PXE enabled distribution point. And in my case, it is on technex-sc01, okay? So uh, as you can see that there's a machine here, which is test-01. We are going to use this machine to see how we can check out this log and what information we can get out of this log file, okay? So you can see that test-01 machine is located here and um, it means that this is a known machine and if I click on collections here, you can see that it is part of two default collections, so which are all systems and all desktop and server clients. All right, so uh, now I'm going to actually start this virtual machine and then we will see that what changes will come in smspxe.log file. So I will go to this computer here. So I have test-01 virtual machine sitting here and it is connected to my um, configuration manager test lab. So I will double click on that. You can check out what time it is. It's 7.35 p.m. And uh, let's check the settings as well because uh, for PXC we want it to boot to network adapter first. Okay, so you can see that network adapter is the first boot. So I will cancel that here and I will start that. And you will see that uh, it will try to boot to PXC and then it will exit out. Okay, see, it exit out. So let's just um, let it run. And now I will go back to my management PC here. And here we will browse to smspxe.log file. So this log file is located on technex-se1, which is my distribution point PXE enabled server. Okay, so I will browse to technex-sc01 and I will click on sms underscore tek, which is the site name, double click, and we will browse to logs. And in logs, we will locate smspxe log. Okay, it is here, SMS PXE. So I will open with the CM trace. Okay, so you can see that at 736, it says that received from client. So it has received the request from client and um, device is in the database because this is a known device. It did not try to retrieve the boot image because no advertisements found. There is no task sequence which is deployed to this device, all right? So no boot action aborted. Okay, this is exactly what has happened. It has tried like twice and couldn't find anything. So this is the type of information you can retrieve from SMS 
pxc.log file. All right, so now I have a task sequence here. So if I go to software library and then operating systems, we will extend that. And in task sequences, I have Windows 10 and x64. If I look at deployments, you can see that it is deployed to all unknown computers. Now I will try to PXE boot an unknown computer. So I have one unknown virtual machine. So I'll go back to my other device where I have a virtual machine. So you can see that test02 is a virtual machine I have. Um, I will open this up and then if we go to file and settings I'll make sure it will boot to network adapter and there's hard drive attached as well So what I will do now I will start this virtual machine and it will PXC boot and it's gonna get IP address from the DHCP server and then it will try to retrieve the information and it is now you can see that loading TEK 00005.vim file Okay, so in this case, it actually worked. So it's 740 at the moment. So what we will do is let's go back to my management PC here and uh, we will look at um, this log again. So at seven, it's actually started at 39. So here it received a request from the client. You can see that here. And then you can hear device is not in the database because this is an unknown computer. All right, and then um, it went further so it found some advertisements all right so you will see that uh, it requested uh, boot image tek 0005 in this way you can retrieve the information where it actually looking for boot image tek 0005 and uh, if i minimize that and if i click on boot images you can see that the boot image which uh, I'm currently using, it's TEK00005, so it is actually loading that boot image. Apart from that, there could be any other reason and um, there could be any other error. So you can use smspxe.log file for this type of situations. So now let's move on to the next part. So in this part, we are going to look at how to enable command support. Okay, so command support is something which uh, when a uh, uh, operating system is deploying and you would like to open up command support and look up logs So this is very beneficial uh, Settings which you can turn on so let's minimize this and if we go back to the machine where we have actually Running that virtual machine test dash zero two you can see that so now it is actually prompting for the password All right, so command support is something which we can use to view the logs, to view the very important operating system deployment logs. So for example, here on this virtual machine, if I enter F8 on my keyboard, you will see what will happen. Here you go, so you can see command support. Now let's have a look at how we can enable this command support on our uh, configuration manager. So I will go to my management computer here. So in that computer, so if you go back to um, boot images. So this is the boot images I am using. So at the moment the boot image which loaded in this instance is boot image x64 the first one. Okay, so if you click on software library operating systems boot images and Here's the boot image if I right click and I'll go to the properties of this boot image and then we will change over to customization so if we click on customization here, you can see that enable command support is ticked. Okay, so you can tick this off. And also if you like, you can set default keyboard layout as well. So I am not specifying it. So it's picking up from the client default keyboard layout, which is completely fine with me so far. However, if you have any issues and you can actually click here and you can pick a default uh, keyboard layout. All right, so then you can click on apply. Um, I have already applied these changes and you can see that uh, command support is functional and I'm going to click on cancel for that one. All right, so now let's move on to the third part of this video, which is very important part. Um, in this part, we are going to check out how to locate very important operating system deployment log file on the client. Okay, so this file is located on the client and the name of uh, this file is smsts.log. 
okay so this file it actually changes its location I have already made a blog about it so I will leave a link for you in the description of this video so you can check out uh, location of smsts.log um, and you can bookmark it like in future if you want to go back and check it you can always go back and check that out so before disks are formatted okay so this is before anything has happened uh, it actually saves the log file on x windows temp sms ts log sms ts dot log and now we'll go back to the vm which is at, at the moment is waiting here on the password okay so command support is enabled so we will press f8 here so you can see that command prompt is loaded and if we type cm trace here you will see cm trace is loaded and we will click on open and we will browse to boot x double click on that and um, we will go to windows and we will go to temp and then sms ts log and sms ts okay so if we open that we can read that log file so what has happened in the background so far okay so if we go at the top of this page you can see that ts boot shell started and ram disk boot path is this so this is where ram disk was created with the help of tek00005 vim file and this is all information you can find out here so if there's anything goes wrong here you can figure it out what has happened and what went wrong so also it has um, loaded that the command completed successfully successfully launched command shell so let's just close this and let's close this as well and we will type in password and in the next step it will show us available task sequence deployed to this computer to unknown computer because this is an unknown machine so if we do f8 again and we'll do cm trace i should have left uh, cm trace open uh, i will open and then we will open sms ts log file again so now you will see that so at 748 welcome page on visit and then uh, you will see that where we have entered the password here it is so we enter the password verifying media password and it's happy with it and it has displayed more information for us okay um, it looked at the assignments and then it has uh, displayed us this information here okay so we can select which task sequence we would like to deploy I will actually close these off for now and you can select this task sequence so I'm going to leave this uh, virtual machine as it is because we are not going to do anything with it so let's minimize this so there's another virtual machine I have which is test-03 and uh, this virtual machine this is unknown virtual machine as well so I will actually start that so if I go to settings of this virtual machine and you can see that it does not have any hard drive okay so there's no hard drive so if we run task sequence on this one it is going to fail and then we will look at smsts.log all right so i'm going to start it um, i'm going to pxe boot right now and it will load vim file and then after that i will enter the password i will pick the task sequence and then we will see it will fail and then we will check smsts.log file okay and we will see the location of the log file Okay, so I will select this task sequence here. I will click next. Um, I can enter a computer name, but I'm gonna leave as it is. Um, and because this task sequence is going to fail, here you go, this is failed. If I uh, press F8, it will load command prompt and I will type um, CM trace and it will open configuration manager trace log tool and we will browse to the log files and this PC uh, boot and uh, windows um, temp smsts.log smsts.log okay so we will open that and you will see that it shows us some errors that it could not find disk zero okay so invalid disk number specified disk zero so this way you will find um, more information about the error
Okay, so I'm going to close this. Um, I'm going to turn this off. So now I will log on to a machine which on which I have actually completed the task sequence. All right, so I'm going to log on and we are going to check where smsts.log is located. Okay, so I have logged on to this test dash zero one virtual machine. And if I open a file explorer and I will go to this PC, Windows C, Windows and uh, CCM and we will click on logs and we will find SMS TS dot log located here and if you open up you can uh, actually find more information about the whole operating system process so this is how you can actually troubleshoot when you deploy operating system if something goes wrong and you can pinpoint the root cause of your problem what is going wrong behind the scenes okay so as you can see that SMSTS log it actually changes its location according to the different phase we checked it when disk wasn't formatted and it was this log here and then if disk is formatted it changes its location to that one and also we have looked at when the task sequence is complete you will find the log is located here so just in case when you deploy operating system sometime you know some of the applications fail however uh, partially the uh, operating system it actually deploys properly but some of the steps it actually misses so then you can go here and check out this log file thank you for watching this video and i have started a blog as well link is given in the description for you to check it out it is blog.technex.com.au and also if you find this video informative please give it a thumbs up and also show your support by subscribing to my channel and also click on the bell icon to get all the latest updates from this channel i will see you in the next video